Welcome to this liturgy on the 10th day of the 12 days of Christmas. This is the Episcopal Church of the Nativity, and we are so glad you are with us, whether you're tuning in today or later in the week. You can follow the service on the bulletin, which is posted on our website, nativityonthehill.org. Our opening hymn is the first three verses of the first Noel, hymn 109 in the Episcopal Hymn Book or in the Bulletin. of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The first two verses of the hymn, Unto Us a Child is Born. Let us pray. O oh God, 
who wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored the dignity of human nature, grant that we may share the divine life of him who humbled himself to share our humanity, your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Today's reading is from Jeremiah. For thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise and say, save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest points of the earth. Among them, the blind and the lame those with child and those in labor together, a great company, they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, he who scattered Israel will gather him and will keep him as a shepherd a flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob and has redeemed him from the hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine and the oil and over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young woman rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill, and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. Psalm 84. How dear to me is your dwelling, O Lord of hosts. My soul has a desire and longing for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. The sparrow has found her a house, and the swallow a nest, where she may lay her young. By the side of your altars, O Lord of hosts my King and my God. Happy are they who dwell in your house. They will always be praising you. Happy are the people whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on the pilgrim's way. Those who go to the desolate valley will find it a place of springs, for the early rains have covered it with pools of water. They will climb from height to height, and the God of gods will reveal himself in Zion. Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Hearken, O God of Jacob. Behold our defender, O God, and look upon the face of your anointed. For one day in your courts is better than a thousand in my own room and to stand at the threshold of the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is both sun and shield. He will give grace and glory. No good thing will the Lord withhold from those who walk with integrity. O Lord of hosts, happy are they who put their trust in you.
reading from Paul's letter to the church in Ephesus. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love, he, decided, he destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe? The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. M 709. the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of the people. The light shines in a darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of the blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, 
This was he of whom I said, he who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart and who has made him known. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. From the day's gospel, he was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. Experts often inform us that our existence depends on something we never heard of. Medical experts tell us that our physical survival depends on all sorts of bodily processes of which we are not normally aware. Historians tell us that our government, even our very way of thinking, only originated because of people and events we did not previously know about. Astronomers report that even the Earth would not exist except for a series of cosmic developments that no one even suspected prior to the rise of modern scientific astronomy. The evangelist John has been acknowledged throughout church history as one of the greatest experts on religion. Indeed, Eastern Christianity calls John the theologian. There have been other theologians, of course, but the Eastern churches insist that John is in a category by himself. In the day's gospel, John, as an expert on religion, tells us that all things depend on something that initially seems shocking, that all things depend on that divine reality that lived a human life as Jesus of Nazareth. In the opening verses of the Gospel, John writes that all things came into being through the divine word that was with God the Father at the beginning. This divine reality is the light and life of all people, and this divine reality became flesh and lived as a human being. Of course, the world did not know that Jesus was the incarnation of God. But, as an expert on religion, John is now telling us. Different intellectual fields have different methodologies for discovering the truth. Science depends largely on empirical observation through specialized instruments such as microscopes and telescopes, and of course, on conducting experiments. History, by contrast, depends on examining surviving materials from the past, such as old documents and artifacts. As an expert on religion, John depends on three things to support his conclusion that Jesus is the incarnation of God. The first thing is what John calls signs, that is, miracles. The second is love. And the third is power. John's Gospel stresses that the miracles of Jesus were greater than those of anyone else, and therefore point to his unique identity as the incarnation of God. For example, in chapter 9, Jesus heals a man born blind. When people refuse to believe in Jesus, the man then declares, Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. 
Of course, the greatest sign, the greatest miracle of all, is the resurrection of Jesus. No one else has risen from the dead. And in John's Gospel, when the risen Christ appears to his disciples, Thomas, previously a hardened skeptic, recognizes Christ's divinity and declares, my Lord and my God. John also stresses that Jesus has embodied God's love to a unique extent. John believes that more than anything else, the ultimate reality of the universe is love. And on this, various religions agree. Faiths as different as Islam and Buddhism confer that at the center of all reality there is compassion. In the first letter of John we read that God is love. And in John's Gospel we find the emphasis that Jesus reveals that divine love more fully than anyone else. This love was especially made visible when Jesus accepted death on the cross for our salvation. In John chapter 15, Jesus declares, No one has greater love than this, to lay down his life for his friends. Finally, John's Gospel insists that if we believe in this unique love, we gain power. In the selection we just heard, John declares, to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God. In other words, if we believe that God loved us so much that he became human and suffered and died to reveal that love, our relationship to God can change so drastically we can go from being mere creatures of God to becoming God's children. We can become so intimate with God that our relationship will no longer be like that of a servant to a master, but as a friend to a friend. Jesus declares, I no longer call you servants, I now call you friends. And we can gain such power that John's Gospel shockingly declares that we will not only do the works of Jesus, but through him we will do even greater works. However, this extraordinary power, the power that proves that Jesus is the incarnation of God, only becomes available as we respond to God's love by loving one another. Later in John's Gospel, Jesus declares, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. And, if you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of Truth. On that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. At this time, we are in the midst of one of the greatest crises of American history, and we are already exhausted. Not in living memory has the United States experienced a medical disaster of the magnitude of COVID-19. We have been in isolation since March, and yet the epidemic has spread and has now reached catastrophic proportions. We are already worn out, and some of us, including me, are demoralized since our government has not handled the disease well. Yes, hope is on the horizon. Vaccines have been produced in record time and are becoming more widely available. For that, we must be deeply grateful to those who developed the vaccines 
and are administering them. And we must be especially grateful to all the medical people who have risked their health, even their lives, to battle the virus. However, we know that the worst is still to come. A new and even more contagious form of the virus has reached California, and it will be months before there is enough vaccine for everyone. Consequently, the lockdown must continue, and very probably tens of thousands more are going to die. Let us then, in the face of this disaster, avail ourselves of the power of which John's Gospel speaks, the power of God's love revealed in the Incarnation. Let us remember that God loves us so much that in Jesus he suffered and died for us. Let us also remember, as St. Paul stresses, that nothing can separate us from that love. Let us, the power of that love from God, love and support one another. Let us remember that whether we live or die, whether our friends or relatives live or die, we all belong to God. We are all one community, whether alive or dead. And let us cling to the sure and certain hope that regardless of what happens now, ultimately all will be well, because God, the creator and ruler of the universe, has in Jesus come among us. Let us join in saying the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the, the Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Prayers of the People after each petition, we will have the response, we have all received grace upon grace. The true light has come into the world, and we have seen his glory. We pray that this light will always shine through us as we make our way through the world you have made. From his fullness, we have, we have all received, received grace upon grace. grace. We pray that the true light will illumine your faithful people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. 
who guide and support your people in their ministries. From his fullness, we, we have all received, received grace upon grace. We pray that the true light will enlighten those in authority throughout the world, that the way to justice and peace will be clear, that the needs of people in every corner of the world will be met, and that violence and poverty will be no more. From his fullness, we, we have all received, received grace upon grace. We pray that the true light will highlight those who need your love and peace the most, those who suffer from illness and anxiety, remembering especially those suffering COVID-19, and all who are caring for them, those, who, who, those whose relationships are broken, those who live in fear and despair. We pray for healing for our parish members, Carissa, Marge, Juliet, Mary, Dan, Donna, Jim, Leslie, and Duane. And for our families, friends, and neighbors, remembering especially Colton, Ellen, Catherine, Ed, Daniel, Marco, John, Thomas, Marge, Mary O, Mary P, Jill, Doug, Barbara, Barbara, Nathaniel, Les, Holly, Linda, Sarah, Kelly and Dennis, and Bob. From his fullness, we, we have all received grace upon grace. We pray that those who have died will be joyfully received into your eternal light and find bliss in your everlasting glory. Bring us all into your glorious light when our journey here is complete. We pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who has brought us out of darkness into the light. From his fullness, we, we have, have all received, received grace upon grace. Lord Jesus Christ, you were born to bring light, healing, peace, and justice into the world. Hear now our prayers and hasten the coming of your heavenly kingdom, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please be seated for a moment. There are a number of important announcements. On this week, on January 7th, a new Bible study will commence. We will be discussing Richard's, Richard War, Richard Rohr's The Universal Christ. The Bible study will meet on Zoom at 10 in the morning. Today, after our service, we will also have a coffee hour on Zoom, and you're all invited. The link is on our website, nativityonthehill.org. Wednesday is Epiphany, the end of the Christmas service, Christmas season, and there will be a service at 6 p.m. The service will consist of evening prayer. We will receive with thanksgiving offerings to Nativity, of pledges and plate. You can contribute by sending a check to the church or by using the Give button on our website. All who participate in this Holy Communion virtually receive the full benefits of the sacrament because we come with the intention of being united with Christ and one another. Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving, and make good your vows to the Most High. For who is greater, the one who sits at table or the one who serves? Is it not the one at table? But Christ has come among us, 
as the one who serves. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your heart, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, because you gave Jesus Christ, your only Son, to be born for us, who by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Redeemer of the world. In 
him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in this sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection unto your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
body of our Savior Jesus Christ, keep us in everlasting life. take our nature, bless you in this holy season, scatter the darkness of sin, and brighten your heart with the light of God's holiness. Amen. May God, who sent angels to proclaim the glad news of the Savior's birth, fill you with joy and make you heralds of the gospel. Amen. May God, who in the Word made flesh, join earth to heaven and heaven to earth, give you God's peace and favor. Amen. And the blessing of God, Creator, Savior, and Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn 119.
let us go forth in the spirit of the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 